Brakatay Hawa, Brakatay Hawa Shai, Brakatay Hawa, Brakatay Hawa Shai, Brakatay Hawa, Brakatay Hawa Shai. Blessed be the true, holy, powerful, and mighty name of the Heavenly Father, Yahweh. And blessed be the true, holy, powerful, and mighty name of His only begotten Son, Yahweh Shai. Our Lord and our Savior. Nathan Masanaka by Eliza, Kwame Shoya Shirali, get double honest to the elders of Israel, being the apostles, and the elders of Great Millstone, that rule well. Shalom, Wahabla, Bakiyar Shoya Shirali, which is peace and love to the elect of Israel. Come back at you again with another lesson, Baha'u Chachodash, Amaf, and the Holy Spirit of Truth. The topic of this lesson is uh, pretty much just going in on how America is modern day Egypt. A lot of the ancient prophets prophesied against a new Egypt that would arise here in the last days. And that new Egypt is speaking of America. So this is, I'm going to be honest, it's about damn near 4 o'clock in the morning. I already started this lesson and my son started crying. So I paused it when I went back to resume. Um, I accidentally cut it off. Um, but without further ado, the work has to, the show must go, to, uh, go on and the work has to be done. But just in case he starts crying or I have to do something for him again, that would be the cause just so you know ahead of time. Uh, so Baba Kusha bear with me concerning that. But anyways, let's hop right into it. Okay. Let's start off with the book of Deuteronomy, the 28th chapter. And um, I'll start at verse 15. It's Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 15. It says, But it shall come to pass, if thou would not hearken unto the voice of the Lord Yahweh thy power, to observe to do all his commandments and his statutes, which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. So the Lord is speaking to the Israelites and he's telling them what? He's telling them, if you don't be obedient unto me, I'm going to bring all these curses upon you. And then after this 15 verse that we just read, he begins to list all these different curses. And all these different curses has fallen upon us. All right. Matter of fact, let me read Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 45. It says, Moreover, all these curses shall come upon thee and shall pursue thee and overtake thee till thou be destroyed because thou hast, because thou hearkenest not unto the voice of the Lord Yahweh thy power. So why are we in this predicament? Why are we in the bottom? Why do we have these curses upon us? Because of, diso because of disobedience, all right, to the, to the heavenly father Yahweh. All right. So how do we get these curses off of? off of us how do we get these blessings by being obedient all right by listening and hearkening unto the words of Yahweh Basham Yahweh Shai our power and if we do so he will bring us salvation and if and he will bring our um uh, uh, he will bring down the land of our captivity he will destroy all of our enemies all right it says, because thou hearkenest not unto the voice of the Lord Yahweh thy power to keep his commandments and his statutes, which he commanded thee, and they shall be upon thee for a sign and for a wonder and upon thy seed forever. So these curses here in this 28th chapter was a sign, a sign to show you who the real the Israelites are. An indicator to show you who the true chosen people are. When you go through these different curses, these curses aren't upon the so-called Jews in the land of Israel right now. The so-called Jays, all right? Uh, the Amalekites, them damn Edomites, okay? These curses aren't, aren't upon them. It's upon the so-called blacks, the so-called Hispanics, so-called Native Americans. Because we are the children of Israel, all right? We were the ones that the Lord brought out of ancient Egypt, Okay? We were the ones that was delivered the land of Israel. All right. Oh, if you look up the, the word Israelite, it, it says ancient inhabitor of the land of Israel. If you look up Israeli, it says modern day inhabitor of the land of Israel, showing you that the people that's, uh, uh, that, that's in Israel today is not the same people that was in there in the ancient days. It's not the same people uh, 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 that, that the heavenly father gave Israel to back in the, uh, uh, in the old times. Right. But anyways, let's get to the point. Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 68. It says, And the Lord Yahweh shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. It's not talking about the uh, uh, ancient Egypt, the land of Egypt. All right? It's not talking about, we walked out of ancient Egypt. We didn't need to, we didn't need ships to leave Egypt. All right? We didn't, uh, 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 Jacob, they didn't need ships to go into Egypt. Joseph, all right? They didn't, they didn't need ships to go into Egypt. So it's speaking of a new Egypt. And this new Egypt will be across the pond. Okay? This new Egypt will be upon, uh, on the other side of the earth. All right? It's going to be a further distance. Right? So far that you're going to have to use a ship to get there. 
Right? Let's read it again. Deuteronomy 28 and 68. And the Lord Yahweh shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. Now, when he says Egypt here, he's just speaking of captivity. He's speaking of bondage. All right? Let's prove that in the book of Exodus chapter Exodus chapter 20 and verse 1. And Yahweh spake all these words, saying, I am the Lord Yahweh thy power, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Showing you what? Egypt mean, Egypt is symbolic for bondage. Alright? Now Egypt is not the original name of that uh of that land. The original name of that land is Mizraim. Mizraim in the Hebrew is Matazarium, alright, which means double straits. All right, that's the that's the true name of uh, uh, of ancient Egypt. All right, Mizraim, Hebrew, Matazarium, it means double straits. All right, and, and America is a place of straits. All right, America is a place of difficulties. America is a place where all these curses, where, where, where these curses have befallen us the heaviest, man. All right, it's speaking of this land. America is modern day Egypt. All right. When Moses said that, that the Lord will bring us into Egypt again with ships, he was speaking of America, man. All right? I got a precept uh, to go into that, further into that. Baba Kusha, give me one second. Let me take care of this child. All right, so back to it. Salakia. But uh, we just going to continue where we left off at in the book of... Uh, Revelations, I believe I was going to Revelations. Revelations chapter 11 and verse... Revelations chapter 11 and verse 8. It says, And their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city, which spiritually is called... So that, that shows you that this scripture, this verse that we're reading in Revelations 11 and 8, it's spiritually speaking. So when it says their dead bodies... It's spiritually, it's, it's spiritually they're dead. The Israelites are spiritually dead here in America. How are they spiritually dead? Because they didn't know who the fuck they are. Who the fuck they, who, who the, who, they don't know who the fuck they are. But now here in the last days, they're waking up to who they are. All right. The, the true Israelites are waking up. In the book of Baruch, it says in the land of our captivity. What is Egypt? Again? What does Egypt mean? House of bondage, right? In the land of their captivity, they shall remember themselves and think upon the Heavenly Father's name. The Heavenly Father's name and His only begotten Son's name. Yahweh Hashem, Yahweh Shai. Alright? So we're here in the land of our captivity. Okay? And now we're beginning to remember ourselves. And the elect is no longer dead. The elect is now living, breathing souls because the Lord has put His Spirit, His breath of life within us to understand this, uh, 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 these scriptures, man. Okay? So it says, and their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city, which spiritually is called Sodom in Egypt, where also our Lord was crucified. All right. So this great city is spiritually called Sodom and spiritually Egypt. And why do you think there's Egyptian pyramid on the back of the dollar bill? All right. Or, or uh, there's a, a, a city called Memphis. Right. <laughs> that goes back to Egypt. OK. Or the, the, um, the Washington Monument. All right, that damn obelisk that that all goes back to Egypt. All right, so America has the same has that same spirit of Egypt. What also happened in, in ancient Egypt? All twelve tribes was in bondage in ancient Egypt, just like how all twelve tribes was in bondage here in America. All right, it says in the book of um uh, in the book of Jeremiah it says that that uh is Judah and Israel was oppressed together, meaning all twelve tribes. Had to go through this bondage over here in the Western Hemisphere. Alright? And then under the pyramid you see what? Novus Ordo Seclorum. Right? Novus is new ordo is uh, order. And seclorum is um world, right? Or age, right? A new a, a new um order world, a new world order. Right? That's what they're seeking to establish. But the Lord said in the book of Job, in the fullness of his, of his sufficiency, he shall be in straits. When he begins to fill his belly, the Lord is going to punch him in his stomach and make him vomit it all up, man. You're not going to rule. You're not going to establish. You're not going to fully establish this new system that you're craving to establish, that you uh, 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 greatly desire. All right. The Lord is going to bring an end. He's going to destroy. The, and th this is where I'm getting at. All right. 
the Lord is going to destroy Egypt, just like he did ancient Egypt. He brought that place the fuck down, right? That's what he's going to do to modern day Egypt, except modern day Egypt is never going to rise again. Modern day Egypt is going to be a complete desolation. And that's how we get the difference with scriptures that talk about ancient Egypt and scriptures that talk about the new Egypt. The Egypt that uh, 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 being America, which is spiritually called Egypt, as we just read. So I'm going to get a precept um, to back that up in the book of Joel, chapter 3 and verse 19. Egypt shall be a desolation and Edom shall be a desolate wilderness. All right. This is showing you right here that the Edomites being the so-called white man, he would be in rulership over the future Egypt. Okay. That, uh, that, that uh, revelations we just read, it said what? It said which uh, uh, it, it was it was revelations is what is, is a book of prophecy, right? Revealing what's going to take place in the end. All right. So it was speaking of a city. It was speaking of a, 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 a kingdom. Right. That great city, which spiritually is called Sodom and spiritually called Egypt, who is ruling that place that spiritually called Egypt is the Edomites. All right. And we just link the two with this with, with this precept here in Joel. Through that precepts, I get understanding. This is Joel. or Yeah. Joel chapter three and 19. Egypt shall be a desolation and Edom shall be a desolate wilderness. All right. And it is the only kingdom that was written about to, to completely be destroyed off the face of the earth. All right. The, the only kingdom what it says in the Zondervan uh, um, Compact Bible Bible Dictionary. All right. It's, it's, you go look up Edom. All right. It says the uh, the only neighbor of the Israelites, which was. Uh, uh, which was not promised any mercy and great future judgment, great future judgment. All right. So now we're here in the future. OK, that same that same Egypt that Moses was talking about. We're here now here in America. All right. That same uh, uh, a city. OK, where, where, where John the Revelator said was spiritually Sodom and spiritually Egypt. We're here now in America. All right. Spiritually Sodom. Do I have to describe that? Do I have to go into detail on why this place is called spiritually Sodom? Look what the fuck is going on around you and what happened to ancient Sodom and Gomorrah. It was completely obliterated, just like how modern day Sodom and Gomorrah, modern day Egypt being America. All right. Modern day Babylon is going to be a completely uh, uh, obliterated. All right. In Zechariah, the Lord it talks about a speedy riddance, meaning a quick, hasty annihilation is what the Lord is going to bring upon Edom, modern day Egypt, uh, 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 modern day Babylon. OK, being uh, 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 the U.S. Right. It says Egypt shall be a desolation and Edom shall be a desolate wilderness for the violence against the children of Judah because they have shed because they have shed innocent blood in their land. All right. They, because of what? Because of the violence of Judah and not just Judah, but all 12 tribes, man. It starts with Judah all the way down. All right. All the way down to the rest of the tribes, man. Because of what you have done, the Lord is going to make America completely desolate. All right. Then after America is completely desolate and your whole society and system is, is, is destroyed, you're going to build up out. You're going to be the slaves, man. You're going to be the new nigga. All right. You're going to build up our palaces. All right. You're going to build up our treasure cities, man. OK, verse 20, it says, but Judah shall dwell forever and Jerusalem from generation to generation. All right. We're going to be on top forever and ever and ever, forever, ever. All right. Daniel's the second chapter it says that the Lord is going to set in the days of these kings shall the power of heaven set up a kingdom which shall never be destroyed and shall break in pieces all the other kingdoms on the earth, man, all the other nations. You're going to bow to us when Yahweh Shai comes, man. All right. It says, verse 21, for I will cleanse their blood that I have not cleansed for the Lord dwelleth in Zion. The Lord dwelleth within Zion. All right. That's who he's dealing. With. He's not dealing with everybody on the planet, with all the nations. He's only dealing with Israel. More specifically, he's only dealing with the elect of Israel. All right. Isaiah, the 19th chapter. Matter of fact, let's go to Isaiah, the 19th chapter to further back up uh, 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 going into the new Egypt, man. All right, this is Isaiah chapter 19 and verse 19. Uh, ver I'll start at verse 1 and we'll jump around. Isaiah 19 and 1. The burden of Egypt, behold, the Lord Yahweh rideth upon a swift cloud. How, do, how is the Lord, how is Yahweh Shai coming back? He's coming back. All right, well, let, let's grab it. 
All right. My woman got my son, so we got time. Right? This is the book of Acts chapter 1 and verse um, Acts chapter 1 and verse 9. It says, And when he has spoken these things, while they beheld, he was taken up, and a cloud received him out of their sight. Right? So this is when Yahweh Shai was leaving his disciples, his apostles. Right? It says that a cloud received him, meaning he was beamed up. The cloud is speaking of the chariot. All right? That's what the cloud is speaking of. The chariots of Israel. Let's get the precept to back that up. All right? Precept upon precept, precept upon precept. It's the book of Psalms, chapter 104 and verse... Psalms, chapter 104 and verse... Uh, three, it says, who layeth the beams of his chambers in the waters, who maketh the clouds his chariot, who walketh upon the wings of the wind, who maketh the clouds his chariots. So when it says that a cloud received him, it says that he was being, it, it really means that he was beamed up into a chariot. All right. A so he, 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 he was, uh, 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 um, ascended into a so-called UFO, ascended into a so-called UAP, right? Verse, uh, going back into Acts chapter 1 and verse 9. And when he has spoken these things, while they beheld, he was taken up and a cloud received them out of their sight. And while they looked steadfastly toward the heaven, he, as he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel. These are angels, man. All right. And they was dead. The angels, they're going to be decked out. All right. In clean, white, cl white, clean apparel, man. All right. Verse 11. It says, which also said, ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into heaven, into heaven? This same Yahweh Shai, which is taken up from you into heaven, shall so come in like manner as ye have seen him go into heaven. So the same way Yahweh Shai left in the cloud is the same way he's coming back in a cloud. All right. In a chariot, which we brought the precept out to show you that the cloud is speaking of the chariots, the so-called UFOs. Right. Back in Isaiah chapter 19 and verse 1. The burden of Egypt, behold, the Lord Yahweh, Ba'asham Yahweh Shai, rideth upon his swift cloud and shall come into Egypt. Yahweh Shai is going to make a stop here. Now, it says that, that he shall come into Egypt, right? Then we just read that Joel and, and linked uh, uh, Edom and Egypt together. In the book of Isaiah, the 63rd chapter, it says, Who is this that coming from Edom with dyed garments from Basra? That's Yahweh Shai coming on that swift cloud, making a pit stop here in America in Edom and Egypt, right? Verse 2, it says, And I will set the Egyptians against the Egyptians, and they shall fight every one against his brother. That's what's taking place in America. It's not this place 100% divided. Oh, in Portland, they rioting and going crazy, right? A few weeks ago, when George Floyd, uh, uh, when when George Floyd got murdered on camera, right, in front of the whole world to see what was happening in every single state in America, there was rioting, there was looting, there was protest. The Lord is setting the Egyptians against the Egyptians, and what Yahweh Shai is saying in the New Testament, He said, "If a kingdom be divided, it cannot stand." Right? So that's showing you that's a sign of the end. That's the, that's the sign of the collapse of this of this uh, 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 of Egypt, of modern day Egypt. OK. It says, and they shall fight everyone against his brother. Just wait, man. Just wait. Soon there's going to be millions of people getting evicted out of their houses, man. All right. They're going to lose it. Food shortage is going to come. Everybody's going to lose their damn mind here in Egypt. All right. Except for the men of the Lord, except for the prophets, except for the elect, the chosen. Because why? Because the Lord has given them faith. And by faith is how we're going to be saved. All right. The Lord has given the elect wisdom. All right. It says wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of times and strength of salvation. The knowledge, the faith that we have is what's going to keep us stable in these last days. While everybody else is going crazy or everybody else is unstable. It says, and they shall fight every one against his brother and every one against his neighbor, city against city and kingdom against kingdom. And the spirit of Egypt shall fail in the midst thereof. Yeah, this place is done. There's no more mirth here in America. Oh, the, 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 uh, the uh, world or America opened up for what has been a few months, right? Just wait till it shuts back down. And when it shuts back down, these people are not going to have, they're going to, there's going to be a lot of homeless people, right? Just wait, uh, August, we're in August, wait till um, September, man, all right, in these later months, here in the later months of 2020, it's going to get, it, the Lord is going to turn shit up, man, and it's going to be a beautiful sight to see the downfall of our enemies, the destruction of the land of our captivity, 
It says, and I will destroy the counsel thereof, and they shall seek to idols and to the charmers and to them that have the familiar spirits and to the wizards. So all that wicked ass witchcraft that they be doing. All right. That's all going to fail them. OK, the Lord controls them spirits, man. OK, verse four says in the Egyptians. Well, this is not talking about ancient Egypt here in Isaiah's time. Egypt was already uh, in the past. Egypt was already history. OK, Egypt never came on some type of level after that. After Israel was delivered. This is speaking of the new Egypt, the same Egypt that Moses prophesied that we would go into on slave ships. The same Egypt that John the Revelator was speaking of in that Revelation the 11th chapter. All right. It says, and the Egyptians will I give over into the hand of a cruel Lord. And that cruel Lord could be uh, uh, could be Trump, Donnie Trump. Right. And a fierce king shall rule over them, saith the Lord, the Lord, Yahweh, folks, the, 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 the Lord is going to completely finish this place, man. All right. And Lord willing, I believe he's going to use Trump to do so. Got these troops already out here. All right. It just takes the right event. That coronavirus in the beginning of the year, that was the right event. All right. Perfect event. Okay. Caught these motherfuckers off guard. But wait, there's more. All right. The Lord has a lot more in store for this place. All right. Verse five, it says, and the waters shall fail from the sea and the river shall be wasted and dried up. The water shall fail. All right. So there's going to be a drought. No water equals no food. Equals hungry people and thirsty people equals people going crazy equals cannibalism. All right. And this is all prophesied in the scriptures. Verse six, it says, and they shall turn the rivers far away and the brooks of defense shall be emptied and dried up. The, the reeds and flags shall wither the paper reeds by the brook, by the brooks, by the mouth of the brooks and everything sown by the brooks shall wither, be driven away and be no more. All right, so the Lord, the, the, the food source is gonna is already short. All right, and, and, and soon it's gonna be obsolete. Soon you're gonna have to completely do whatever the fuck, all right, they want you to do in order to get any type of help or any type of aid and resources, man. And it, and it goes back to ancient Egypt again. What happened when Joseph was in Egypt, right? There was a famine. During that famine, the people of Egypt they sold everything that they had. They had nothing else. So they said, what? We have nothing else. We gave everything that we have already to you. All we have is ourselves. So they became, they became the, uh, uh, um, the legal tender. Or they became the, the trade-off. All right? You want to eat? We're gonna have to, well, you're going to become a slave. That's what we see happening here in modern-day Egypt. Just like in ancient Egypt, money failed. Right? Well, money's going to fail here in modern day Egypt. They just keep printing money. This next stimulus package, right? That's money printed out of thin air, right? That's getting closer to this money failing, to this dollar collapsing, right? So let's continue on. Uh, Isaiah chapter 19 and verse 8, it says, The fishers also shall mourn, and they, shall cast, and they that cast angle into the brooks shall lament, and they that spread nets upon the waters shall languish. Moreover, they that work and find flax and they that weave networks shall be confounded. Right now, they that work and find flax and weave that is speaking of what fine linen, um, um, clothes like clothes. All right, you see, there's a um, there's a uh, what do they call it, uh, an apo uh, retail apocalypse, man. All right, it, these are just different signs of, of Egypt, America being shut down. Verse 10, it says, and they shall be broken in, in the purposes thereof, all that make sluices and ponds for fish. Now, when you look at this word sluice or sluices in Isaiah 19 and 10, when you go into the blue letter, uh, uh, it goes to the Hebrew word shakar, right? Sha, ka, and ra. And it, and it, and it says wages, right? It, it says wages. So it's, gonna, it's saying what? That your wages is going to fail. Right. Not going to be getting paid no more. That's why there's over 50 million fucking people on uh, uh, on um, unemployment, man. Or oh, we read down and says there's no work for Egypt. We're going to jump to that. All right. But also when you look up the word sluice, all right, on um, on Etamon or, or any other dictionary app um, or website, it is say a barrier to uh, a, a barrier to um, pretty much shut out water. OK, so that's the two definitions. When I looked into it, that's the two definitions I got in the Hebrew is shakar, shakara, right? Shakar, which means wages. OK, 
So so the wages is, is going to be broken. They're, those are not going to come anymore. Okay. So verse 11, it says, surely the princes of Zoan, Zoan is in Egypt, right? Our fools, the council of the wise counselors of Pharaoh is become brutish. How say ye unto Pharaoh, I am the son of the wise, the son of the ancient kings. I'm going to jump down and get to the point. It's already 25 minutes in here. Let's get to the point. All right, this is um Isaiah chapter 19 and verse 14. It says, The Lord have mingled a perverse spirit in the midst of the in the in the midst thereof, and they have caused Egypt to err in every work thereof, as a drunken man staggereth in his vomit. Now just imagine that. Imagine a man that just threw up everywhere and he's and he's and he's rolling around in it. That's filthy. That's disgusting. Well, that's Egypt now. That's America now. It's filthy. It's disgusting. It's detestable. All right? All of America, all the 50 states is a fucking abomination, man. Okay? It's perverse. All right? Verse 15, it says, Neither shall there be any work for Egypt. Over 50 million people unemployed. All right? And now that extra 600, that little cushion, that ain't coming no more. And a lot of stupid niggas been spending money like they, like they got a job. So now that that's over, a lot of people, millions of people is going to get evicted out of the houses before the end of the year. It says, which the head or tail branch or rush may do. It's not going to be any work for Egypt, top to bottom. Right. Verse 16. And that day shall Egypt be like unto women and it shall be afraid. Now, look at look at these niggas now, man. A lot of most of these niggas is straight up bitches, man. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> It said, but when all hell turns up, wait till wait till that time. All right. It says, and it shall be a and it shall be afraid and fear because of the shaking of the hand of the Lord Yahweh of hosts, which he shaketh over it. And the land of Judah shall be a terror unto Egypt. Every one that maketh mention thereof shall be afraid in himself because of the counsel of the Lord Yahweh of hosts, which he have determined against it. All right. And the counsel of the Lord, Yahweh, by Hashem, Yahweh, Shai, the Lord of hosts, is all coming to pass. All right. His determination is coming into fruition. Verse 18, it says, In that day shall five cities in the land of Egypt speak the language of Canaan. Right. So speaking of America, right? Egypt. All right. Here in here in America. All right. There's men speaking the language of Canaan. The language of Canaan is what? Is the Hebrew. Right. It says, um, Every one that maketh mention thereof shall be afraid in himself. Uh, so like it. Verse 18, it says, In that day shall five cities in the land of Egypt speak the language of Canaan and swear to the Lord Yahweh of hosts. One shall be called the city of destruction. That's America. This place is going to be destroyed. Verse 19, it says, In that day shall there be an altar to the Lord Yahweh in the midst of Egypt, in the midst of the land of Egypt, and a pillar at the border thereof to the Lord Yahweh. So this altar is speaking of what? The men on the highways and byways. All right. On the book of Second Peter, or is it First Peter, the second chapter, or second, one of the Peters, it says what that we are a spiritual house to offer up spiritual sacrifices. All right, it's First Peter, First Peter, the second chapter and the fifth verse. I'll just read it real fast. Ye also, as lively stones, are built up a spiritual house and holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to Yahweh by Yahweh Shai Mashiach. So we are the altar spiritually. Right. Verse 20, it says, and it shall be for a sign and for a witness unto the Lord Yahweh of hosts in the land of Egypt. For they shall cry unto the Lord because of the oppressors. Right. And that's what we've been doing, man. Crying aloud, sparing not, lifting up our voice like a trumpet, sighing and crying, vexed with the filthy conversation of the wicked. Right. Uh, continuing on, it says, and he shall send them a savior and a great one, and he shall deliver them. So the heavenly father, Yahweh, is going to send us a savior. That savior's name is Yahweh Shai, the only begotten son. Well, it goes back to the first verse <laughs> where it says that the Lord rideth upon a swift cloud. That's how Yahweh Shai is coming back, right? He's coming back on that swift cloud to deliver his elect, to deliver the ones that sign and cry, the ones that's on the altar. Right. And to destroy the land of America being the new Egypt. All right. Let's get another precept on that and we'll finish it up. All right, this is the book of um, Second Ezra chapter 15. Second Ezra chapter 15. I'm going to jump to the point in verse um, 
Verse 10, second Ezra chapter 15 and 10, it says, Behold, my people is led as a flock to the... Now, let, let me, I have to start up. Verse 1, right? Second Ezra 15 and 1, Behold, speak down the ears of my people the words of prophecy, which I will put in thy mouth, saith the Lord Yahweh. So this, this chapter is a chapter of prophecy. We're speaking of future tense, right? Verse 10, it says, Behold, my people is led as a flock to the slaughter. I will not suffer them now to dwell in the land of Egypt. It's not talking about old Egypt. It's talking about the new Egypt. All right. Again, this is prophecy. Verse 11, it says, But I will bring them with a mighty hand and a stretched out arm. That mighty hand is Yahweh Shai. That oh, what we just read in Isaiah 19. He'll send us a savior and a great one. Yeah, that's speaking. Uh, that, that links up with this, showing you. That the mighty hand, that's speaking of Yahweh Shai, that goes back into ancient Egypt. What happened in ancient Egypt? The Lord sent the destroyer and he filled all the Egyptian houses with death. That destroyer is Yahweh Shai. He's coming to destroy new Egypt. In the book of Wisdom of Solomon in the 18th chapter, it says that the all thy almighty throne leaped down from heaven and filled the earth with death. All right? Who's the who's the word? The word is uh, uh, um, Yahweh Shai, John the first chapter, the word became flesh. He comes in a volume of the book. It is written of me. So the Lord is the almighty word that's going to leap down from his throne and he's going to fill America with death. Isaiah 66, the slain of the Lord shall be many, shall be many. It says, but I will bring them with a mighty with a mighty hand and a stretched out arm and smite Egypt with plagues as before and will destroy it and, and will destroy it in Slakia. And will destroy all the land thereof. Showing you it's not talking about ancient Egypt. Ancient Egypt was not destroyed. Uh, 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 um, the, all the land of ancient Egypt wasn't destroyed. It's being inhabited to this day. Speaking of America. Now America goes under the code name of Egypt. Uh, uh, we just read it in um, Revelation 11 chapter. It also goes under the code name of Sodom. Spiritually called Sodom. Spiritually called Egypt. Under the code name of Babylon. On the code name of Syrian and Nineveh, all right? If you if you read about Babylon being completely desolate, speaking of America, because ancient Babylon wasn't made completely desolate. Same with Egypt. We just read it right now. It's, he said, I will destroy all the land thereof. Ancient Egypt wasn't all destroyed. So it's speaking of this place that we're in now. Verse 12, it says, Egypt shall mourn, and the foundation of it shall be smitten with the plague and punishment that Yahweh shall bring upon it. The ultimate plague that the Lord is going to bring upon this place is the nuclear missiles, right? But before that, Egypt, there's going to be a great mourning within Egypt. And we just got some of the details from um the 19th chapter, Isaiah the 19th chapter. It's not going to be any water, which means not going to be any food. Everything's going to be filled. It's not going to be any work, okay? Um, next verse, it says, uh, Egypt shall mourn and the foundation of it shall be smitten with the plague and punishment that Yahweh shall bring upon it. Uh, they that till the ground shall mourn for their seed shall fail through the blasting and hail with and with a fearful constellation. Right. So the the the, er, the, the crops is going to get fucked up as it already has been. Verse 14. Woe to the world and them that dwell therein for the sword and their destruction draw off nigh. And for the sword and their destruction draw nigh, and one people shall stand up to fight against another. What did we just read in Isaiah 19? He will set the Egyptians against the Egyptians. Yeah, and they shall fight against each other, right? It says, uh, for the sword and their destruction draw nigh, and one people shall stand up to fight against another. And swords in their hands. Um, I just feel like I'm, I missed a point somewhere. I'll continue to read. Maybe it'll come to me. Right? It says, uh, For the sword and their destruction draw off nigh, and one people shall stand up to fight against another people, and swords in their hands. For there shall be sedition among men, and invading one another. And we're going to see that, man. We're going to see that real soon. And in the next couple months, we can see that. A lot of people will soon be ev evicted, because there's no work for this damn place. Over 50 million Americans are unemployment. Which means millions of people is going to get evicted from the house, man. Which is going to cause them to go crazy. Which is going to cause them to run into other people's houses. To take shit, right? And invading one another, they shall not regard their kings nor princes. And the course of their actions shall stand in their power. Right? The, the, the rioting. It's going to get worse than, how, and than it already has been. Verse 17. A man shall desire to go into a city and shall not be able. So because of the rioting, all right? Because of people losing their damn mind and going crazy, 
They're going to send the troops in. And there's going to be checkpoints. All right. We already seen glimpses of that through this whole coronavirus shit. But that's mainly the point that I wanted to get. You know, there's other other scriptures I can bring out. But that, that's the point. You know, we're already 30 minutes, 35 minutes in. Yeah, that's it. Um, the scriptures say, though, I probably read it. it is, like I said, it's like five in the morning at this point. But it says it's somewhere in this chapter. It says I will send plagues upon Egypt as I did before. Right. So the same plagues that was uh, 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 how the Lord broke down Egypt incrementally ancient Egypt incrementally he's doing that now to modern day Egypt he's incrementally breaking this place down and the plagues is going to just worsen from here on out but having that said little woman I was edifying I want to give all praises to Yahweh by some Yahweh Shai by some of Chachodash Yahweh is a true holy powerful in the name of the heavenly father and Yahweh Shai is a true Holy, holy, powerful, and mighty name was only begotten Son, our Lord, and our Savior, or Kakwadash, is the Holy Spirit that speaks through us, that allows us to rightly divide the word of truth and teach the word correctly and directly. And that Masha Nakabai lies of Kumi Shara Shirali, get that we're honest to the elders of Israel, being the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone of Ruel, and Shalom Wahab Labaki Arshaya Shirali, which is peace and love to the elect of Israel. Shalom Akim, my brothers, keep on pushing, stay sober, stay diligent. Salvation draw off nine, and redemption is near than we believe. Shalom.